Hey guys, first off, I am super sorry it took me so long to get this out to you. I've had a crazy couple of weeks. One of my roommates got, well now, ex-roommate, because she is now married. And then, after that, I just had to do a ton of stuff that had been put off or added on, because she got married. You know, I did video for her wedding, which was my first time, and... Anyway, I apologize. I got kidnapped by life. But I am back. And, uh, getting to do a bunch of cool stuff at work and whatnot. So, uh, hopefully I can tell you all about that this weekend, even though this weekend is also the schedule for that exploded as well. But anyway, about this fit check. Um, the, the spacesuit fit check is what the name implies. So, it's making sure that all of it fits you and you can be in it comfortably for a long amount of time. So, the, the particular test that I signed up for uh, I could be in the suit for up to eight hours, so, um, you know, if there are any pinch points or, or any areas of discomfort, you know, if you're feeling it for just a couple minutes, you know, if you kind of stretch that out over an eight-hour span, it can become a pretty big deal and can lead to a pretty big discomfort over a lot of time. So that's why you try to do this fit check and find all these things early. And uh, check out my previous posts to find out about the testing and, and what it's for and everything like that. Um, so, so I got to the spacesuit lab, it's on the third floor of my building, so I showed up around 8 o'clock in the morning, and they were all ready for me, there were a bunch of people there who were just waiting for me, they were all the spacesuit techs, there was a whole bunch of them who work in this, this lab, and, uh, they said, okay, you just go into the bathroom, you change, and then, uh, some people are going to take your measurements before you put the suit on, so, so I went in the bathroom and I put on, well they call it underwear, I call it really comfortable PJs. Um, it was long, kind of like athletic material, uh, pants and a t-shirt, really comfortable clothes. A um, little bit thin, but it was fine. Um, apparently there's thicker, warmer material for when you're in a suit for longer, but since I was just doing my fit check, I, I didn't need the super thick stuff, so, but I did good. I did fine. So anyway, I got all uh, dressed up and everything, and then, um, and, and just the what I call comfy PJs. And then I went over and a couple girls took some measurements of me, uh, standing up, sitting down, etc., twisting my, my foot like I'm squishing a bug so they can get certain hip measurements, uh, things like that. And then I was ready to put on the actual suit. So, so when you walk into this, this lab, you open the doors, the first thing you see is kind of an, uh, a little bit of an open area in this room, uh, open floor. There's a table, rectangular tables on each side, and between them there is a lazy boy chair. And in front of that, there the suit was lying uh, kind of like a, a squished pile uh, on the floor. So I was able to step behind the suit, and they talked me through how to get into it. So you put your feet in first, and then you sit down on the chair and, and kind of make sure your feet go all the way down uh, into the, the bottom part of the the foot, it, it kind of looks like the, the innermost layer of the suit is kind of like a rubber suit. So uh, I had to put my foot in and then pull it all the way up and kind of wiggle around a little bit to make sure it really was all the way up. And, uh, and then this little like rubber footy was, was pretty secure around my feet, uh, each foot and, um, and of course, on the outside layer, you've got the orange stuff, the part that you, you've seen in all the shuttle astronaut pictures and everything. Um, so I was able to get my feet in, and, uh, and then I had to do my arms. So, um, so they kind of scrunched up the arms and, and you put in kind of both arms at once, and then the guy said, alright, we're, the, the main head, uh, the lead spacesuit tech, he said, okay, so you're gonna, Duck your head down, turn it to the left, and then there's this um, this piece of rubber on the inside uh, inside of the ring uh, for the helmet. Uh, it's called the neck dam, and it's basically kind of what the name implies. It's it's a piece of rubber that separates your neck from the rest of your body, so you have different airflow from your neck down to to the helmet. So it's kind of the the piece that separates the flow. You can kind of think of it like how like a literal dam stops whoa from one place to another. Similar idea, but with air instead of water. Uh, water would be bad. Anyway, so uh, so yeah, so I had to kind of scrunch down really tight and then turn my head to the left and then grab the neck ring 
and then pull it down over my head, and that that took some work. Um, and that took some effort, but but I got it, and then I was able to stand up, straighten, uh, and then they zipped up the back, and uh, and then I was in the suit, which was really cool. Um, the next thing was uh, the helmet, the, not the helmets, <laughs> the gloves. They put the gloves on and uh, cinch those down, and then they needed to take a bunch of measurements uh, with the suit on. Uh, you know, like what's the distance from my elbow to my fingertips and things like that. Where's my wrist sitting? How, when I stretch out my hands, how much room is there between the tip of my fingers and, like, is there any any distance in the fabric between kind of the the crotch of the fingers of the gloves and and my actual hand? Things like that um, that can make a big difference when you're actually pressurized in the suit. So they took a whole bunch of measurements and then they said, all right. We are going to have you do a practice emergency procedure. If your main oxygen supply fails, a backup regulator is going to come on. So the flow, uh, when you're breathing in the suit, the flow uh, where it's coming from is going to change. So normally it's coming down from, uh, I think it like normally it would be starting in from below you, like brow and your chin, and it's coming up. But then, um, when you're in an emergency situation, using the backup, you hear a crack sound, and then the flow changes to coming up from behind your head and up over your face. Um, so they closed the, the, the helmet. Oh yeah, I skipped that part. They, they had a snug, kind of snoopy cap with these, with the comm system in it, so I was able to, uh, to hear people in my ears, and I had two microphones right here so I could talk to people. And then they, uh, put the helmet on, snapped it, uh, secure on the rings around the neck, and then they, you know, gave me the instructions, and then they closed the visor, and as soon as you close the visor, there's this big whoosh of, like, you can feel the pressure change, and then you're like, oh, I have to breathe now, <laughs> and, uh, and you can feel that you're actually breathing off of a, a different system, uh, so that was a little bit different, um, you know, when they did the little test, and I could hear the click, and, uh, and I could feel the oxygen direction of flow change, and that was pretty neat. Um, you know, and I gave them a signal and said, yep, I'm good. And uh, then they took me up to just a little bit of pressure. Uh, I think that was like one PSI. So, so when they start increasing the pressure, you can kind of think of this as if you start going further down in a swimming pool. So if you've ever uh, dived before, whether just in a pool or if you've actually gone scuba diving, um, you know that the deeper you get, uh, the more pressure you feel, because you literally have the weight of all that water on you. So, so it, you can feel kind of that, like, like kind of just building up on you. That's increased pressure. So, when you're inside this space suit, um, you're getting increased pressure, and it, it's not. I personally didn't feel a difference on my body per se. But you can feel it in the suit because the suit inflates and becomes like a really hard rubber balloon. And it becomes a lot more difficult to move. So so they inflated it to about uh, 1 PSI, which is just a little bit of pressure. So you can still, you know, move pretty easily at that point. Uh, but then they took it up to 4.3 or 4.5. And at this point, it's hard to move the suit. You know, if I want to bring my arms from out here... To here, you know, it goes from this motion to, uh, you know, because you're just fighting so much more uh, force and you are in a limited amount of volume. Uh, and that was the other weird thing. If I move, you know, if my arms are out here, let me do this. If my arms are out here and I moved this, I could feel the pressure changing on this hand because I'm in an enclosed volume. And uh, if, if you've had any chemistry or, or any of those classes, uh, you've heard that if you've got volume in a closed space, that volume has to remain constant. So that meant if I moved my foot up and down, I could feel it in my arm. Or if I moved my fingers on my right hand, I could feel it in the fingers on my left hand or in my toes. Like Because the pressure has to be the same throughout the whole suit. Um, so we did... My roommate's blanket, and it's really comfortable. I'm in an old dress, I'll steal with it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I got all pressurized, but I'm standing up, and this suit is designed for sitting. 
So I'm literally like doing a squat because I it's hard for me to stand up straight. <laughs> so I'm holding the squat for I don't know how long I was in that position, but it was tiring. Um, but they got the measurements they needed to. They brought me back down to the normal uh, room pressure and opened the visor. And I was like, whew! <sighs> you know, I'm able to stand up straight again and everything. And it was, ah, okay. No, I'm doing good, doing good. Um, so then in the same room, they had a uh, seat mock-up. Uh, and it's a flight-like version of the actual seat that is going to be in the Orion mock-up. Or the, the Orion vehicle, excuse me. I said mock-up. Let me just say mock-up because I used to work on this mock-up when I was a co-op. So it just kind of rolls out naturally. Sorry. But the real thing. Yeah, this is the real seat for the real thing, which is pretty awesome. And that's also largely why I'm not allowed to share pictures. That chair plus the suit I was wearing equals proprietary and secretive. So, sorry guys, I wanted to share, but I'm not allowed to. So, they had me uh, climb into the seat, which was actually quite a task when you're in the full suit. Um, you had to kind of, like, hunch over on your elbows and then twist to get on your back and then swing your legs up into position. So, it was pretty difficult to do with the big helmet on and everything. Um, but I did it with, with their help. The techs were great, by the way. Um, and, uh, and they brought me up to pressure, and we did all these different tests of like, hey, you know, you've got this controller here. Um, how much of it can you see? How easy, how easy is it for you to move it up and down, left and right, and twist it when you're in the suit? And, uh, you've got this panel above your head that's going to be the control panel. Um, how easy is it for you to reach the different areas of this control panel? Okay. Uh, what about before you're pressurized? What about after you're pressurized? And all these different things. Um, so it's cool. I got to go through a bunch of different steps like that. But the most difficult challenge that I had was um, apparently I'm a small person and the suit that I was wearing is bigger than I am. So um, they had to, uh, we for quite some time we had to adjust my feet because I'm wearing these flight boots and uh, when the suit was pressurized, the top, like the tongue of the boots were pressing into my shin. So like the lower part of my shin had an area of distributive pressure. It felt like it was maybe that big on the front of my shin. Um, and it didn't necessarily hurt. It felt like somebody was going like this against my shin. Um, and it, I told the text, because they said, they told me very specifically many times, if you feel uncomfortable, if you feel discomfort, you need to tell us because this could become a bigger problem. So I did report pretty early on, hey, I've got this pressure on my shins. You know, it's not comfortable, but it's not really at the point of pain yet. And they were like, okay, we'll keep us posted. And uh, a little bit later, I said, you know, I'm feeling something in my feet. I think they're cold, but I can't tell. And then one minute later, I said, oh, yep, my feet are going numb. Can we, can we fix this? <laughs> And uh, they were super, they responded so quickly, and they adjusted the seat. They went through so many things trying to, you know, they said, well, what if we uh, loosen the laces? What if we move your, like, from this angle to this angle? What if we bring your knees together? What about if we move them further apart? What if we switch chairs or seats uh, configurations? And they just did so many things, and we finally hit a uh, a configuration that, that worked really well for me. I was able to sit in that position for about a half hour, and uh, I didn't get any more numbness in my feet or anything, which is great. And again, the reason why this is such a big deal is because if you are uh, in there and it happens within five minutes, uh, you can have serious problems if you're in there for eight hours. So, uh, yeah, again, the techs did a great job. I was really thankful for all of them. And, uh, and they were super, super knowledgeable and responded to things so quickly. And, uh, yeah, so at the end of the, the fit check, um, I went, I think, about an hour and a half longer than anybody expected I was going to go. But apparently I was also the first person who actually climbed into that specific suit, which is awesome. I can say that I'm the first person who got into that space suit, which is super legit. And another thing I just found out yesterday, apparently um, astronauts during shuttle days didn't usually need to get pressurized. So I spent more pressurized time in that suit than like 90% of astronauts. So I'm like... Yeah, that's that's cool. <laughs> um, no, that was really amazing. Um, yeah, so I was able to, uh, when it was all done, they brought me back down to normal room pressure and 
Uh, I was able to climb out of the suit and, uh, and, uh, all the guys were like, man, you did a really good job, like, considering that was your first time, and, uh, you know, you get some great data, and, you know, you didn't, you know, apparently some people have gone in there, and, and when things didn't quite fit correctly, they got a little bit, um, angsty, <laughs> uh, and complained, and, and I didn't do that, and the guys were really, um, appreciative, so, um, yeah, it was, it was a really good day, and, uh, yeah really awesome and and now I can definitely picture um, myself going through the real test which should come up in the next couple months uh, where I'm going to be put in a vacuum chamber and they're going to bring it down a vacuum and I'm going to be in a suit and it's it's going to be cool so uh, thank you so much for listening I know this video is longer than mine usually are but uh, yeah thanks a bunch for listening and I will keep you guys posted have a good night